Check, 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 check. It's, uh, it's about mid-January and I'm about to head out here into the forest to harvest black trumpet mushrooms. And in a good year I could probably pull in like 50 pounds of these things or more. So I've really had to learn how to process them efficiently. So when I get back, either this evening or maybe tomorrow morning, I'm going to show you how I process them efficiently for drying. I could probably eat pretty easily. I could go through two gallons a year of the dried mushrooms, uh, maybe up to like four gallons if I wasn't holding back. But typically in a good year, I'll dry as much as I can because not every year is a good year. This year seems kind of mediocre. We'll see what we can find out there. So when you pull these things out of the ground, they'll come out with uh, some dirt on the base here. And you want to trim that off with a knife before you put them in your basket so that the dirt doesn't contaminate the rest of the mushrooms in your basket. And you're not hauling home a bunch of dirt that which you don't need. And uh, also, that way they're, they're ready to start processing as soon as you get back and you don't have to go through and cut off the dirt from the bases. You could also just cut the um, bases, you know, cut them off, but you can see how when I pulled this out it came out with a really long stem. So I really feel like if you pull them out you get more mushroom for your effort. Like look how far this one's buried in, it's pretty hard to get all the way down in there and cut that off. So as you can see, I did pretty well here. Not great, but uh, it's a nice pile of mushrooms. And now we're gonna clean them for drying. I prefer drying for storing these because they're excellent dried and they keep for a long time and it's pretty easy to do. So I used to examine each mushroom really carefully for dirt. Um, I still examine them for things like dried edges or rot or some or mold or something like that. But in terms of the dirt, I've just decided it's much easier to just pull every one of them open because a lot of dirt and bugs, uh, little centipedes and spiders and pine needles and stuff get down into these stems here, or I guess tubes is probably a better thing to call them. And you want to make sure that there's no folds where the dirt and stuff can hide in the tubes. So I'll pull the mushroom open and then pull again, pull open any spots that are kind of folded in on themselves because they don't mostly grow like nice tubes like this one that you could clean and stuff. But most of them, you'll get these kind of monsters like this that are just all like mushrooms growing out of mushrooms, something like out of uh, HP Lovecraft or something. And so you just want to make sure that you peel everything open that is folded in and could be hiding dirt because when you rinse them, you want that dirt to be able to freely just wash away. So yeah, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to stuff them, obviously you have to kind of examine each mushroom carefully for dirt and brush it off or wash it off. It's okay to wash these. They don't waterlog quite as bad as some other mushrooms. But I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. So it's these really folded up guys that have all kinds of flat spots and crushed tubes need to be pulled open all the way. But once you get going, it really doesn't take that long to do. And it takes a hell of a lot less time than examining each one. And so far, I'm glad to hear from anyone else, but this is the most efficient way I've found of doing this when I'm doing large quantities, often much larger than this quantity. And efficiency is largely a matter of just forming good habits. People, um, you know, today we're, we have so many privileges that work is sometimes viewed really as a sort of symbolic activity. There's this whole culture of, you know, corporate work that constantly jokes about, you know, productivity and basically about work not being about getting anything done, but just about getting a paycheck and 
acting like you're busy, but you know, if you try to translate that attitude into subsistence activities, you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> Sorry, but you know, if I do this efficiently, it buys me time to go get more mushrooms. It buys me time to get seeds started for the summer garden. It buys me 365 days of dried gourmet mushrooms. It buys me a lot. Not only that, I get something else out of it, which is, you know, taking pride in doing a, a good job and feeling that, you know, I have a purpose of sorts. Um, not in the broader sense, but, you know, I have a job to do and I like knowing that I can get that done because if I can get jobs done, then that means I have survival potential in a paradigm other than this one we're living in now. So of course I'm gonna to toss out a few that are maybe a little rotten. You'll notice that my hands move slow when they need to and I'm, you know, say examining a mushroom or delicately peeling it in half. But every other move in between is really fast. Once I decide this mushroom's going in the bowl, I'm just committed to it going in the bowl. There's no, and I'm on to the next thing. There's no like, oh, I'm gonna place this in the bowl now. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm not doing everything at the same speed. All right, well that's So, two bowls of water. And this is kind of like washing spinach, where the heavy grit will settle quickly to the bottom, but also little bits of pine needles and stuff will float to the top. And you can skim a few of those off, but I find that if you handle the mushrooms properly, most of the little pine needles and stuff get taken care of anyway, and you don't really have to do much. So I'm sloshing these around somewhat vigorously, but still gently with spread open fingers and when I pick them up to put them in the next bowl of clean water I pick them up with my fingers kind of like this and that lets little small pieces like pine needles and leaf fragments fall through and stay in the water. So there's going to be a substantial amount of grit in the bottom of this first bowl and that's almost all the grit right there. However, I usually do this four times. It's easy enough to do. In the sink, you can be filling one bowl while you're rinsing the other, and it's, it's very fast to just do it a few extra times. But if I'm just cooking for myself at home, I'll, often I'll just do that one quick rinse in a, in a bowl of water, and uh, you know that's good enough. Next, they go into a salad spinner. If you don't have one, get one. They're awesome. When I first heard about them, I was like, that is so stupid. Like, what a stupid waste of resources to make something to spin your salad. Who needs, I never spun my salad, and I was fine. But once I tried one, it was all over. And then I just spread them out about one layer thick. So they have good air circulation. And I'll put this tray, if it's sunny out, I'll put the tray in the front of my car on the dashboard and or outside, but the dashboard will really make quick work of drying almost anything. Very excellent, you know, expedient for solar drying. And if it's not, I put them over my wood stove and crank it up. If I turned it on this evening, they would be almost dry by morning if I stoked it up before I went to bed. They dry really fast. They have thin flesh. And then as soon as they're well dried, like crispy dry, they go into jars. Voila! So, um, once the mushrooms are dry, I usually spread them out on a tray. They shrink a lot so you could combine several trays onto one. 
and then I blast them in the sun or over a hot wood stove or something to get them nice and crunchy and crispy like this. And they don't seem to keep that well if they have moisture in them. So you want to keep them pretty crunchy like this and you know you could use uh, just use some jar that seals well so you can keep them nice and dry. And maybe at some point I'll do a video on how to use these, but they're pretty versatile. They go with a lot of different savory foods, so it's pretty safe to experiment. Just, you know, rub, rub some of these between your hands and throw them in different dishes or toss a few in hot oil to flavor the oil. And, uh, yeah, these are pretty much a staple of turkey song cuisine.